Uh, my name's Silver Oliver and I'm an information architect currently working in news and knowledge in the BBC online. Uh, and we're in Media Centre, which is in uh, White City and sort of the heart of sort of uh, BBC online. Okay, so could you describe in lay terms what an information architect at the BBC does? Yep, so information architects are responsible for um, the structuring of the site, so labelling, categorisation, navigation, and making a, a, basically using our editorial and sort of data assets to sort of, um, to, 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 yeah. Okay, and is data journalism more suited, do you think, to online and print, or...? To broadcasting? Yeah, it's an uh, interesting question actually because I guess in terms of investigation it doesn't really make a difference how you're broadcasting it so sort of you know big data journalism projects will um, you know have a uh, broadcast output you know potentially a print output but also an online output but I think where it gets really interesting is in terms of the communication aspect and the things you can do with data journalism online that you can't necessarily do with broadcast um, so, for instance, um, allowing users to um, change the facets of a particular visualisation to sort of understand so stories which are specifically focus, um, are particularly relevant to them, that you just can't do uh, with broadcast, where you just have to choose one cut and one story. OK, and do you think there's a danger that there's some data that gets into the public eye that shouldn't? Pass. <laughs> OK. I, but I think on that, actually, the... The interesting thing is that, and this is more about the web, I guess, in general, is the, the web has just uh, allowed unparalleled access to information and data. And I think uh, certainly with documents, we've, we've sort of acknowledged now that things will pass into the public domain, but I think increasingly data will as well. So um, in, if, if journalists don't pick it up and write stories with that data, sort of the, the public will access it anyway, so there's no longer that luxury of being able to sort of hold stuff back and sort of uh, keep stuff out of the public domain. It will just find its way there, so, uh, um, you know, journalists have to sort of, uh, yeah. Um, what's the BBC doing to embrace data journalism? Yeah, and I, I think there's two parts. So there's the investigation and there's the communication. And um, the most important bit with the investigation is getting good people who understand how to do good data journalism and um, you know can work with the data and we I mean we have new technologies and tools but I don't think that's as important as people who know um, you know how to how to find a good story in data and to a certain extent I think we're lagging behind people like the Guardian uh, and the Times who are bringing more and more people on board to do this sort of stuff but I guess uh, in online traditionally you might you might look at the BBC and say we focus more on communication than investigation and actually what no one's really doing at the moment is looking at how uh, data in general and the web can do interesting new things uh, in terms of communicating. So, uh, so an example would be a, a nice infographic works equally well in print or put onto a website but um, what we haven't really started doing is looking at things like personalization and how can, um, how can, how can you take the unique properties of the web and actually start telling stories differently with data. I can give some practical examples but uh, <laughs> Uh, if that would help at all. Yeah, um, so uh, at the moment we tend to uh, write stories and put them up on the web and then sort of hold them together by editorial linking from one story to the to another and actually that works fine but it sort of doesn't scale and that that starts to break as you try and do more and more um, with uh, telling news stories on the web but actually um, by using data and abstracting away some of the knowledge away from the sort of manual holding together of stories. It allows you to do a lot more sophisticated things and I guess a really good example of that is the New Sky news app where they've um, abstracted away the notion of um, a news event so you can sort of be watching a particular um, a particular news story on Libya and go behind the story, go into a timeline, find associated assets. And it, I think it's just showing how, by abstracting away some of that knowledge of this event and hanging assets together around the event, you can start to do a lot more sophisticated things. Yeah, I mean, do you think that being a data journalist is incredibly sophisticated? Do you think you have to be very skilled to do it, or do you think that it's something that the average person could learn? Yeah, I think um, there's really, really good book called How to Lie with Statistics which I think was published in the 70s and it's really short and actually that's the important bit I think it's the data literacy isn't it and at the moment actually you'll find that uh, lots of the visualization you know the, 
the notable visualizations being done at the moment are by people who are good either uh, at developing or have good um, graphic design skills. But actually, when you sort of dig behind it, sometimes some of the the journalism and the sort of facts, you know, all that stuff you'd expect from as part of the journalistic process can be um, a bit flaky in places and the danger of uh, miscommunication to audiences because that sort of level of rigour hasn't hasn't happened. So, uh, so uh, I think it's the the literacy and understanding the, the power of statistics to tell a story or convince, but also the danger of misleading as well. And I... I and that's also not just about data literacy for the journalists, but also sort of educating the audience to understand how to sort of uh, spot dodgy statistics, you know. When, uh, and I guess this has happened for years, with sort of, um, but it becomes a lot more apparent. And I think uh, projects like um, Open Data, Brighton and Hove is really interesting where they're planning to release lots lots more data. And the idea is that then um, developers can build applications and sort of um, useful interesting things based on that uh, data being made available draw out more s stories and, and data journalists could have data that they can then use to sort of draw out stories but at the same time by uh, having this sort of culture of open data in the city there's this sort of notion that generally it can make the people of Brighton more data literate as um, part of it and that's actually a really interesting thing to just you know to try and achieve.